Look. How do y'all feel about Barack Obama? Another Chicagoan. <laughs> for me, for me, I can't say, man. Uh, tough, right? This is tough. Yeah, it's tough. But uh, <laughs> I think he, he did as much as he was allowed to do. Yeah. You know, as much as he was allowed to do. I don't think he had uh, power uh, um, to do what he wanted to do. So, you know, I, I had a, that, that was, in, that was on my mind in the beginning. I think that all presidents have an agenda. I mean, you have, I mean, well, America has an agenda and it doesn't, doesn't matter who the president is, the president has to fall in line with America's agenda. That's right. Uh, but now in, in the mix of that agenda, presidents get to lobby for certain, certain causes that, that, that are dear to them, that are, that they're passionate about. Mm -hmm. So, for, for Obama, it was health care. And even though that was very controversial, it wasn't enough to get him knocked off because the agenda didn't cause for health care to not be affordable for everybody. Mm -hmm. If the agenda had called for health care to be affordable, not affordable for everybody, and he had pushed that button because there's so many billions of dollars involved, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we'd be talking about Barack Obama in past tense, okay? Right. So I, I believe that, I believed that the first term, like most people, I was like, well, he can't do too much because he's not gonna get a second term. He just gotta get in there and hold it down, just hold it down. And then in that second term, smash the gas. Right. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, wah, wah, wah. You're like, we didn't get nothing. <laughs> end of the day yeah you can say americans got something collectively but we didn't get nothing like he gave other groups he gave other marginalized groups something specifically for them right we didn't get anything we're all a marginalized group and we didn't get anything specifically for us this is why i'm with puffy when he says the black vote will not be free this time around for the democrats now a lot of people get it construed, they get it misconstrued. They say, well, you know, well, you know, a vote for, you know, well, why would you question that? Why, why speak on it now? Well, they say, if you don't vote for Biden, then that's a vote for Trump. Mm, right. Well, the thing is, is that that's fear politics. We, we're gonna just vote for Biden, even though he sold us out with the 94 crime bill, even though he's never done anything for us ever, he's been a politician most of his life. He, he can't point to one thing that he has done to enrich our communities. Mm -hmm. Not one thing. He's already had an audition to be president. He was vice president. He ain't got one thing on his record that he has done specifically for black people. But all of a sudden, we're gonna make him, pre we're gonna reward him uh, a, a seat in the Oval Office and we gonna expect that he's gonna do something for us this time. Right. I personally don't think so. And but if he if he is and he got plans to, like Puppy say, put it in writing. Right. Give us a deal. We want to make a deal. And if you ain't got no deal, fuck it. You must didn't want to be in. The rest of you Democrats, y'all must didn't want him to win. Y'all must didn't want him to win because y'all didn't play ball. And if Trump is the president for the next four years? Guess what, fam? We have survived worse than Trump. Yeah. Think yeah. about what I'm saying. Dude, all through slavery, we had presidents and survived every last one of them rotten bastards. Yeah. We have survived every president, every situation from slavery to Jim Crow to redlining to the Tuskegee experiment. Right. The bombing of Oklahoma, uh, right. the the the, the uh, mass incarceration, the crack epidemic, yeah. all of these things ravished our communities and destroyed families, black families. Yeah, and that coronavirus. All these things, all these things have harmed yeah. us tremendously, and they've been trying to stump us out, but they can't. Mm -hmm. They haven't been able to do it. So we've survived all of those things. We will survive 
another four years of Trump if that's what's in the cards. And so yeah. we cannot, in my opinion, vote afraid. We cannot be afraid to participate in this, in this thing called politics or not participate out of fear. Mm -hmm. We have to do what's right for us in terms of business. If me and you are in business together mm -hmm. and I'm making money, but you're not, we're not going to be in business together too long. It don't even make sense. Mm -hmm. It don't even make sense for me to only make money and then you, you starve it. Mm -hmm. But you continue to stay in business with me, hoping that I come around and treat you fairly. Right. It doesn't make sense, man. And I think the sooner that we catch this shit, the better off that we're going to be as a people. So I felt like that, I felt like Barack could have done something extra. Like, I'm going to tell you how cold I am with it. Mm -hmm. Had I won the first four, and once I got in and saw that the Republicans was willing to throw the whole country under the bus, mm -hmm. just to piss me off, oppose me, just to try to get rid of me. Once I realized that when I say up, they say down. If I say cold, they say hot. I say yes, they say no. I say spend, they say save. I say save, they say spend. Once I realized what they're doing, oh, so that job is to just oppose me no matter what I do. They're right. going to oppose me. At that point, executive order, executive order, executive order, right. executive order, executive order. Fuck y'all. Right. That's where I'm going with it. And if I die, I die. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to die standing. I'm going I'm to die on two feet, bro. I'm not going to die on my back. Right. I'm going to die standing up. You right. know, and if I fall on my knee, I'm trying to bite your fucking ankles off before I die. I'm not going to just die. You know what right. I'm saying? I don't understand the type of mentality, this, this docile mentality. I don't get it. Right. Well, definitely it comes from the, the, what you just said, the years and years and the years of the mentality of the people who rule. You know what I'm saying? Right. So uh, if, if paying attention to that alone says, you know what I'm saying, it, it makes you feel in your, in your, your psyche like I can only do so much mm -hmm. when you can really do what you want to do it just you know the consequences behind it and you're not willing to take those deal with those consequences ah okay okay and, and, and I believe most of these people already have they fucking orders already before they even get in the office most of these cats already promised years before they even get in the office okay so we're going to put you in office. When we put you in office, this is what you got to do. Here's your script. You know, read this script and do that. You do anything outside and we're going to kill you. And a lot of these cats, again, they don't have, they're not a man. You know what I mean? They let motherfuckers, they puppets on the string. You know what I'm saying? So you'll sell your people out or you'll sell out, you'll sell your soul rather than stand up and be accounted for, stand up and be a man and do the right thing. Do what's right. By the people, because you're putting in this, you put in this position to do right by the people. But instead, you've been promised millions and billions of dollars or ahead of this organization or this or that, just your little secret society shit. You know what I mean? So, and you sell your people out. Right. And that's been going on forever. It's been going on for years and it's still going on to this day. I can't do it, bro. I just can't do it because I feel like, like if you sell your people out, bro. That's, to me, the worst thing that a person can do. Because I feel like my life is bigger than mine. I feel like the people that came before me are responsible for me even being here and being able to do whatever I do. However, however much progress I've made in life, I owe it to them. Because you got to start somewhere, right? Well, our journey didn't start in America as slaves. We were kings. We were queens. So that's why our journey started. And even on this side, we were already here before they got here. Okay? So when you go from that point to slavery, then 
where our people were stripped of their dignity and their heritage, their, their culture, their names, their families. Some of our people were even stripped of their spirits. So when I think of my ancestors, I get emotional because I know what they went through Man. for us to be where we are. Yes. And I feel like there's a great responsibility that comes with that. And mm -hmm. I don't take it lightly. So when I see people clowning, like clowning us, trying to clown, especially our own people trying to clown us and use us as pawns, I get very offended. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You dig? Mm -hmm. And I look at them as the enemy. And I think that we got to get used to looking at our own people. Some, some of our people are enemies. And when we locate those enemies, you know, we need to deal with them accordingly. We need to deal with them just like we would deal with any other enemy. We cannot allow those who look like us to have a past and be able to roam and rape and pillage and, and destroy our communities. We have to get them too. That's right. Yeah. So that's I mean, definitely real. That's real. That's real. real. You know, that if you, once you remove those, then you could begin to rebuild. You know? Yeah, because we don't have those stumbling blocks in the way. Like once, once we move as a unit, mm -hmm. it's a wrap. That's why these protests don't work. Yeah. Protests do not work. First of all, protests put you, make you vulnerable because you're out there on your own. When them folks come, they're going to always be with the establishment. The police is always with the establishment. That's why they don't beat up white supremacists. That's right. That's why the white folks out there clowning and swinging on the police and pushing the police, and they just <laughs> doing all that. <laughs> they out with billy clubs and guns. They, they, don't, they don't feel like they feel for their life or none of that. Right. Because that's part of the establishment. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So unless you're on that side, unless you get when you're dealing with them like that, you're good. But if you are ever fighting for black liberation, that is against establishment. Mm -hmm. The establishment is against black progress. They're against black success. That's right. They're against black happiness. That's right. This is why you see so, so many times you see these videos where these people will see black people just barbecuing walking that dog, just having a good time, feeding a pigeon. Mm -hmm. They see some happy shit. Did he smile? What? No, what are you doing out here? You're not supposed to be here. Right. You know, you're not supposed to be here. They want to get rid of you because they don't want you to smile. They don't want you doing no laughing, especially if they're not, if they're having a bad day. Mm -hmm. How dare yeah. you have the audacity to smile? to be happy, how dare you? Let me show you how you should be really, how you should really feel. And then, so that goal is to provoke you, anger you, you know, get you out of your element mm -hmm. and try to make right. you bow down. You dig what I'm saying? So They can't control you, they, they wanna kill you. They gonna kill you. No, they ain't, well, they, they may wanna kill you, but- They wanna kill you, right. You know, there's some things that you could do to, you know, to circumvent that, you dig what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Say, look, yeah. yeah. 